I think I had always wanted to serve a mission, or at least it had definitely always been in my mind as something I was highly considering. And I think a lot of that had to do with having a lot of great young women's leaders um, and teachers and like my, uh, my parent, like my friend's parents, um, like their moms who had served missions. And so in my mind, it just was something, you know, I'd hear them talk about their experiences a lot. And so it's like, oh, I want to do that too. That sounds, you know, that sounds exciting. And then, you know, I just always had it in the, you know, the back of my mind. And I came out to BYU for my freshman year of school. And at the time, the age um, limit was still at 21. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, I got a couple of years, you know, I'll be like almost graduated and then I'll go. And so I started taking various classes and just with the way like timing was working out on when I was getting into various classes, it was sort of like, it felt right. I felt like, yeah, I'm supposed to take these classes now, but I was really confused because I was like, I have no idea how this is going to this is going to leave me in a really weird position when I hit 21. I'm going to be a really strange point in my degree. It's going to make it going hard. Um, I had wanted to go on a study abroad and I had gone on a study abroad to China and I was in China at the time um, when they made the age change announcement saying, you know, sisters who are 19 years old can go and serve missions. And I was 19 at the time. And I was just thinking like, oh my gosh, that timing, like if I left right after I got, you know, back and everything, it all worked out. And it was just sort of this big aha moment for me, realizing like, okay, this thing I'd always wanted to do, now I understand why all the timing had looked weird because God had sort of been leading me up to this point to make it so the timing was perfect for right after um, I got back from China, I was able to, you know, go get everything ready and uh, head off on my mission that April. Well, I had about a sem a, just under a semester um, from when I got back from China before I headed out. And so I was like, I should use this time well. And so one of the things that I did is I wasn't you know, out at BYU. I was back in Michigan at the time, but I took an online missionary prep course uh, through BYU. And so that was really, I think, helpful for me was, you know, taking that prep course, just, you know, sort of studying a lot of scriptures about missionary work. And sort of getting to understand before I went out what the purpose really was. I think that was important for me because it was something I'd always wanted to do. It was something I thought, like, this is going to be fun and exciting. But I think I definitely still at that point had to develop more of a testimony about why we really actually should do missionary work, why it's important. And so that was something that was really helpful to me that helped put my mind, I think, in the appropriate mindset. So when I went out, I was going out to serve and not just to have this fun, cool experience. Absolutely. Something that I wish I had done more was simply learning how to talk to people who I hadn't been introduced to. Because I'm a really, I, I feel like I'm a generally outgoing person. I can talk with people pretty easily, but that's like if they introduce themselves to me or I have somebody introduce me to them. And so I don't have to know them well to have a conversation, but I'm, I had a hard time making introductions myself. And so that made me really nervous when I had to go out on my mission and just talk to people, you know, completely out of the blue, you know, complete strangers. And I wish I had worked on that more because there's a lot of times where I really wanted to say something to people, but I'd just be so terrified <laughs> that it'd be, it'd be hard to do it. And I think if I had practiced that more, you know, being the one to reach out and talk to people first, I think that would have helped me get over that a little faster and I could have done more. I was, when I got my mission call, um, I had been expecting to get called Chinese. I had already been studying for a couple of years. It was my minor. I was in China when I got my call. Um, but I was like pretty sure I was going to one of the missions in Taiwan. Um, I was with a bunch of my friends who had all, all just gotten back, you know, pretty recently from serving there. And they're like, you're going to go to Taipei or you're going to go to Taichung. And they were like, tell me, here's why it's going to be awesome. And then like, there was like one kid there was like, well, you might go to Canada. Like I served in Vancouver. So I was thinking, okay, like maybe Vancouver, you know, or like maybe England. Cause I had, you know, a friend who had served there Chinese speaking and I got my call and then it said Toronto and I'm from Detroit. And so the bordering mission of my home mission is the Toronto mission. Um, from my house, I can drive within my mission boundaries in about 45 minutes. And so I just saw Toronto and I was like, I'm going to my backyard. <laughs> and I was really sort of 
I was shocked. Um, I was like, okay, Mandarin, like that was expected. Um, but I was, I was really surprised cause I didn't expect Mandarin in Toronto. It was just like, those go together. Um, but I was mostly really excited. I had spent a lot of my summers growing up within the boundaries of the Canada Toronto mission. And I was like, I'm getting to go to my vacation spot <laughs> for my mission. I didn't get to do much, you know, it was a very different experience than what I'd ever had vacationing. And so that was fun getting to see that other side of a place I'd already come to love, but it was, I don't know, it was comforting to me. I felt very much like God knows me, you know, he knows that I, I love Canada and he gave me, you know, you know, Chinese and it was, I, I felt like this is, this is my mission call.